I don't want to use the word mistake, John, because if I do, it gets taken out of the context that you're asking me the question on. Well, did, was, uh, did we I, pay I, too high a price? Yeah, I would say that what we should realize and have realized that there will be deleterious collateral consequences when you do something like that. This idea that this virus doesn't afflict children is not so. It does. We've lost close to 1,500 kids so far. But with, much less but, than yeah. the older population, obviously. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you shouldn't discount that it does afflict children. So it isn't without consequences. If you go back, and I ask anybody to go back over the number of times that I've said we've got to do everything we can to keep the schools open, no one plays that clip. They always come back and say Fauci was responsible for closing schools. I had nothing yeah. to do. That was outgoing White House chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, on ABC News this week, pushing back on any notion that he had anything to do whatsoever with the collateral damage that shutting down schools had on kids during COVID. Fauci, who says he will step down after serving in his role as head of NIH's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, reflected on his tenure, adamantly defending his response to COVID-19, but acknowledging now that mistakes were made. Mistakes were made by someone else in a passive kind of sense. He doesn't like to call it a mistake because, you know, then, then I, I guess he's subjected to some amount of scrutiny. Um, there's probably no, no uh, federal official or bureaucrat ever wants to admit anything's a mistake. Um, but, uh, but it was. It was a catastrophic mistake. We, you know, we've, we see, you can see the math and reading, test scores plummeting, the social anxiety, the, I mean, the difficulty for parents who then had to watch their kids. Remote learning, just an absolute farce uh, for so many kids. Uh, some kids did, did fine with, I, I think, the kids who are already um, quite academically gifted, were you know, who can learn on their own, who are already very ahead, we're doing fine, maybe. But the the kids who who most need both the structure of school and the advantage that you know a dedicated tr teacher can provide them, they were just so ne negatively impacted by this. Absolutely, and I won't say that it was a mistake, so to speak, as it was unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who's worked in education, education policy for a long time, full disclosure, I currently work for the former Secretary of Education under Obama, John King, learning loss is real. And learning loss technically happens almost every year. We, we, count, we count that vacation. among summer vacation as yeah. well. And we call that the brain drain. But here, where you had students who were out, in some cases, almost two years, um, be it whether they were doing remote learning or whether they were doing some hybrid model, depending mm -hmm. on the school district, what we know is that specifically school districts that are in impoverished areas, those that have lot hard, larger concentrations of communities of color, um, places where there was already um, so, some issues related to reading and math on grade level, those are the areas that got hit the hardest. In addition to watching teachers leave, the teacher shortage was largely funneled. We were going to have it anyway. You know, numbers showed that a decade ago that fewer people were going to college to get education degrees and teach in the classroom. But now we see so many teachers that have left since the pandemic never to return. So there are teacher shortages. There is the social impact for the young people. They're not socialized with other yeah. young people of their grade. That's going to be huge. Obviously, yeah. they're, they're at home. Um, and we're seeing antisocial behavior because of that. We're seeing anxiety and right, depression levels increase among these young people. The digital divide. Several school districts didn't even have the capacity for students to sign up to do anything online. We know that in some of our larger school districts in New York, in LA, in Chicago, in Atlanta, um, you would have 60%, sometimes over that, of students who didn't sign in at all for any class. Mm -hmm. So uh, learning loss was huge. And now we're seeing the, the fruits of that, so to speak, when it comes to the, um, the percentage points decline in particularly math and reading, essential building blocks of success. When you have uh, math and reading scores that are lower now than they were before the pandemic, and sizably so, again, in some of our larger districts, you're talking double percentage decreases. Um, that's a huge shift because it means more people aren't going to graduate from high school. We're seeing dropout rates increase, which America has been steady for at least 12 or 13 years yeah. now with increases in high school graduation. That is being reversed. If you don't graduate from high school, many people aren't going to go and get the GED and then go on to college. So we're talking about long-term consequences of not having financial stability because in this country, much to the chagrin of myself as well, um, you have to have a degree because of the way our system is set up yes. to actually get not only a living wage job, but a job that provides you health insurance, a job that provides you benefits, a job that allows for you in many cases 
to be able to afford that home or at least be able to have access to housing. That is not what is going to happen when we see so many students, literally thousands of students. In that clip you showed, Fauci mentioned maybe 1,500 that you know might have gotten COVID. We're talking about 40 states that were surveyed that showed hundreds of thousands of students yeah. who are basically set back yeah. and set back not only months in some cases, five or six months in terms of their educational acumen, but years, depending on where they were, the concentration of poverty right. and things like right, that. Right, right. And it's so uh, dishonest for him to kind of say, well, I am blameless here because I was not in charge of the school policies. F sure, fine. but. Federal guidance on COVID, we, we just we did not do a, a at least if you lived in a an area controlled by Democrats, a blue area, which many most of our cities are, um, they they did not go their own course. They did they marched in lockstep to what the CDC was telling them, what the White House coronavirus advisors were saying, and the guidance on that was so clearly um, toward uh, toward fear of COVID. And, and look, which is not to say that's fear like any fear of COVID was illegitimate. Like we've talked about, the impacts on elderly and immunocompromised people are significant. Which several of those are also in our schools, be it whether they're teachers, bus drivers, cafeteria absolutely. workers, things like that. But we had, but you had, um, you know, you had e even after the point at which all the staff members of these of these places were able to be vaccinated, you still had schools not resuming immediately. I mean, as you probably know, the teachers union leadership advocated for, uh, I heard Randy Weingarten say it on TV, say she really would not be comfortable having schools resume until there was something approaching z no COVID transmission in schools whatsoever, which we now know will never happen. Or it's just not gonna happen in the next decade. Um, that was the level of, of, of uh, disinclination for putting students needs first that we that they would and, and and in fact schools stayed shut down more than anything else in our entire society I was say, restaurants I were open people went back to work if they many I mean many many people had to work the whole time working people mm -hmm. still went to work and we talk about how well we were all virtual a lot of people we're not we're virtual not. for it any did not have the time. opportunity to be but virtual. Our restaurants open so everyone back to work everything operating because you, because it had to happen Schools still shut down. That was true in this city. D.C. was one of the most school shut down, one of the most locked down places in general, but especially the schools, how long it took. And, and then with, you know, mit mit all sorts of mitigation efforts, still uh, masking, et cetera, which I, which I personally believe it, it has contributed so, to some degree of learning loss. I think for some kids, it's hard to understand their teachers if they're all having to wear masks all the time. It's clearly impacted their Kind of social development, and this. I mean, some people, some schools had, were still were still requiring kids to wear uh, masks while they were, you know, doing sports and things like that. Uh, it's a whole different subject. But in, in the early aughts of the pandemic, I agreed with a lot of what we saw school districts do across the country. Quite frankly, because we didn't know, mm -hmm. we didn't have all the information that we needed about how this was spread, and we wanted to take care of kids. This isn't the first time that we've seen um, districts that were afflicted shut down. Like right now, Jackson Public Schools um, has, has shut down in Mississippi largely because there is no running water. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that there are things that exist, particularly as you know, we heard from Dr. Fauci as well as other, um, as other leading health professionals about mitigation efforts, whether it was air quality in schools, ventilation, yeah. whether it was making sure that they had clean water, whether it was reducing class size, whether it was um, somewhat stalling school schedules to reduce the amount of people in the halls. These types of things were designed to mitigate once students got back. I will concede that I think students should have been in the classroom again sooner. The, um, the, the learning loss does not this does not equate to me with what the public health scare happened to be, especially for the yeah. young people, because our youngest learners, quite frankly, weren't necessarily as affected in the same way from that they public health they crisis weren't. as some of the older individuals. Not nearly. So, not even close. Yeah, it, it lasted way too long, and I don't think that those young people, sadly, are going to be able to recoup what they've lost. Mm. Very frustrating. All right, we'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.